So are you guys ready for a break, a fresh burst of luck and growth, opportunity, expansion, generosity, optimism, prosperity, wealth? And did I say luck? If you are, we're getting Jupiter coming back to his home kingdom of Pisces. Hallelujah. For the third time, he started this journey way back um, in 2021 between May and July. Then he was back again, December of 2021 to May of 2022. And last pass for success, happiness, fairy godfather energy for all of us. October 28th to December 20th, as he retrogrades back into Pisces. So we're going to do the all signs. And I'm going to also talk a bit about what this might mean for the world. Um, so before we get there, if you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Lori Lothian, and I am a Western tropical astrologer using ancient traditional astrology, particularly Hellenistic Babylonian tools and techniques. When we astrologers are doing YouTube videos for you online, we're acting as if your rising sign is what we're talking about. Sun sign and moon sign can be listened to, but choose to listen mostly for your rising sign. Don't know how to cast your chart and find your rising sign? Check my freebie below on how to do that free video tutorial in my description box below this video. As well, um, we're using whole sign houses. Don't look at your plastic chart and get confused or your co or companus. All astrology on YouTube is using hypothetical whole sign houses, which is the ancient house system, and which, by the way, I am a zealot for. So one whole sign is one whole house. You don't have like um, a missing house squish between, you know, two, two signs and or three signs in one house, intercepted stuff. You just have a sign, a house, a sign, a house, 30 degrees for each. All right, so what we're going to roll now and this is going to be a fun video to do because i've been so frigging excited waiting for this to happen i have been like looking at it for months with anticipation and excitement so first of all let's talk about what jupiter is so some of you may not know all the details right there's two benefic planets in the sky venus and jupiter benefic meaning they do good things fairy godmother fairy godfather energy if you're born at night according to telenistic tradition your more powerful good guy slash girl is venus and if you're born in the day your more powerful good guy is jupiter take that all with a grain of salt they're both very good and their ability to dispense blessings to you like luck and opportunity flow and ease compassion grace intuition joy abundance and growth each of them is depending on where they are in the current sky and there are certain places that they travel around the zodiac, and there are 12 signs, 12 zodiacal signs in the tropical zodiac. There are certain places they travel where they have great power and very much also places where they travel where they're disempowered, weak, or neutral. The good news for everyone is Jupiter is in power within his home kingdom of Pisces. In traditional astrology, this does not belong to Neptune. There are two kingdoms for Jupiter. One of the kingdoms is Sagittarius, and one of them is Pisces, his water kingdom. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about what that means for the pandemic and what that means for the U U.S. midterm elections, but I also want to tell you it's going to mean something for you in particular, and what it's going to address in your life is where your Pisces chunk of real estate sits. You have 12 real estate pie slices or chunks of territory in a 360-degree sky or natal chart when you were born, and based on your rising sign, you're going to have that pie slice in one of the houses of the 12. And it will mean something like, you know, the seventh house is your marriage house. The fourth house is your home. Your 10th house is your career. The first house is your body. The third house is your siblings. Okay. And I have a freebie, the meanings of that 12 houses PDF down below. Why don't you check that out as well? Because it will give you an in-depth in understanding from both a traditional astrology, modern astrology, and Vedic astrology meanings of each house. All right. So, the reason I'm so excited about this for me, <laughs> it's my money house as an Aquarius rising. My earnings have always gone way the heck up each time this transit has happened. I'm not going to complain, okay? It has been nothing short of yay me. So I'm just looking forward to another financial boost. But there is a downside to Jupiter. And I want to talk about why. Because he inflates, expands, and gases out everything he touches he's a big gas giant and so where you want to expand your prosperity and expand your joy and expand your luck that's wonderful and you won't believe how many times he goes through the fifth house of, of children for people trying to have a baby and finally they get pregnant or if he goes through the first house of you your belly gets bigger sometimes you get chubbier sometimes you get pregnant um but he also touches things like tumors you know and i've seen people get 
you know, a, a growth in their body because they had like a little teeny tiny seed of a tumor and then Jupiter activated something in their chart that could suggest a health problem and something got larger. Now he is still a benefic and he's trying to bring good things. So even those may have had silver linings. Um, over optimism, um, fantastical inflation, um, especially with Neptune and Pisces, like um, faith, hope, and optimism on zealot steroids, where we lose touch with reality, can maybe happen here. With the pandemic, it's been interesting to watch for humanity because Jupiter is a benefic, but Neptune can be the god of viral plagues. He's one of the Marses as well. Um, and, you know, because these tiny little particles called a virus that we can't see are the instigators of you know, getting sick with viruses. Um, Neptune has been uh, swashbuckling or no, he's been swimming through the Piscean water for a long time. Since 2011, the end of 2011, doesn't leave for, till 2025. And therefore this viral God potentially connected to um, airborne or transmissible or viral plagues or foggy things and nebulous ways of being ill is being amplified by Jupiter. And, you know, Pisces is the double bodied sign. It's two fish, right? Swimming in different directions, two bodies. And it's mutable, it's changeable, it's fickle. It goes up, it goes down, it goes left, it goes right. You know, you, it's kind of like hard to pin the tail on a mutable donkey right? Which fish are you going to grab? Are they, They're both going in different directions. And that's kind of how he's been with the plague from the pandemic. I'll give you examples. Back in May 13th, 2021 to July 21, the vaccine rollout had happened and everybody was super optimistic by May 13th of 21 that nobody was going to have a plague around because, you know, 70%, like in Canada, 80% of the population was vaccinated, double vaxxed and stuff. And this was the end of our pandemic for those compliant countries. Well, they were wrong, right? So there's that double-bodied fickle nature. What Jupiter did show us is by July the 28th, 2021, we were seeing breakthrough cases of Delta busting through the vaccine wall. Those Delta cases began to surge and show up in July, August, September, and onward of 2021. My daughter got Delta in August that year. All right, so that's one example. And then in December 28th to May 10th, he was busting back into Pisces. And this time, unlike back in May 13th to July 28th of 2021, in which he only ingressed into the first two degrees of the sign before retrograding on June 20th. And there's that backtrack, right? May 13th to June 20th, we got this pandemic covered. And then June 20th to July 28th, uh-oh, watch out for that Delta vaccine escape, immune escape. All right, well then, <laughs> here we go again, right? So come on, guys, December 28th, Jupiter goes back into Pisces and in comes Omicron. Now, we knew about Omicron at the beginning of late November, beginning of December. We did. But by December 28th, the full blown, everybody, their dog and their sister and their aunt and uncle all have Omicron all the way through January. It was a massive surge. It was December that that spiking began to happen. And the vaccines don't really work, not especially if you had them a long time ago. And everybody was getting Omicron, which is highly transmissible. Jupiter expanding, inflating the Neptune vibe of maybe about mm, hard to pin down, diffuse and mysterious plagues. Like, you know, was it the Wuhan Institute? Like most people think. Uh, was it, uh, uh, you know, game of function research uh, tinkering and escape variant virus? Probably. But that was all big foggy confusion forever as well. And Neptune expands. Neptune is that confusion about origins and Jupiter expands that confusion. So because they're co-present in Pisces. But this time, December 28th to May 10th, Jupiter raced through the entire sign of Pisces. Everybody was a Pisces rising. For instance, got fully enmeshed in a Jupiter event and uh, got pregnant, got fat, you know, had great luck befall them, whatever happened. <laughs> I said a joke because, you know, I got I gained about 10 pounds when Jupiter went through Aquarius, my first house a while back. and. Um, and, you know, it's kind of the thing where he kind of raced through the storyline. And by the end of April, beginning of May, he was making a conjunction with Neptune, which he has never done in Pisces before, because, of course, Neptune wasn't there the last time Jupiter was traveling through Pisces. So it was a very special time. There was Venus was lined up. It was kind of rainbows and unicorns at the last half of April, mid to last half of April to the beginning of May. Okay, so I want you to track with me on this before you get to all signs, because this is where Jupiter's coming back. He's coming back October 28th to December 20th, retrograding into the Pisces part of the sky, going back to 28 degrees, stationing at 28 around the 23rd of November, and then going forward back through Pisces to come back to Aries uh, on December 20th. Now, 
if you are a late degree Pisces, you know, with your uh, sun, moon or ascendant in the last five degrees of Pisces or any of the mutable signs, Sagittarius and Gemini and Virgo, then this is really going to bring you an incredible amount of luck and prosperity and ease and joy and goodness. Now, I want you to think, especially after the direct motion on the 23rd, I want you all to think though collectively what was going on in January of 2010 to January of 2011, minus two months in the summer, which would have been August, September, because he backtracked out of Pisces for a tiny bit. What was going on in your life then? Because that was the last time Jupiter was in Pisces, except for those dates I've already given you. For I'll give you an example for me in 2010, I was dating a man and we moved in together at the end, like the fall of 2020, 2010. And we ended up getting married and we spent eight years together and all of that. So, you know, I will look for pattern repeats about the broader theme of what happened. It was also a very joyful time in my life and a very prosperous time. And of course, this was for me, my second house of, of prosperity and income and earnings and money. But it also was in a, a second house um, relationship to my fifth house of romantic love and giving that a nudge as well. So I can see and I can also see other reasons in my chart that it looked like a, a consolidation and a joy joyful home taking of moving in together in a beautiful seaside home, right? Neptune with my, my ex-beloved Fergus. <laughs> We're still really good friends and he's remarried and everything. So, you know, I would say look for patterns. That's what astrology is about. It's pattern recognition. What was happening in 2010 that could be happening again in your sky in this time in a very, um, in a very staccato way, right? Because of the breakdown, right? Like May to July of 21 and the December to May, December 21 to May of 22 and October 28th of 22 to December 20. He's just like a three-part story, right? He's breaking up his goodness into three dapplings of the sky love for all of us. All right. Um, there's mysticism and magic when we get a, a Pisces activation of any kind and Jupiter expands it. So if you're a spiritual type, intuitive type, magical, mystical type of being, at all in any way, you know, this is going to open up your creativity as your well, you know, divine downloads, creative muse and surges of the muse, you know, that can happen just as a general theme, no matter what your rising sign is of having Jupiter in the swimmy waters of Pisces. Anything else I want to say? Yeah, just the inflation factor. Um, he's, he's going to be close to Neptune again. Neptune is in the you know, I don't know, 25 or something or six degrees of Pisces, and he's backing up to 28. So we could just watch for the factor of wishful thinking and out of out of realism hopes or super juiced optimism that isn't merited. You know, it's good to have a half full cup and see silver linings, but don't gloss over things during this transit of October 28th to you know, um, December 20th, as Jupiter goes direct around 23rd of the month, he's really going to make some, some serious final grand climax on course statements about why he's been in your Pisces house during these three parts. Okay. So I hope that explains a lot. Oh, wait, the, the U S midterm elections. Ah, oh my God. I'm going to be doing a video about that. There's an eclipse with Mercury Kazemi, the sun opposite Venus in the sun and Scorpio and Uranus on the eclipse. It's going to be gnarly and intense and wild. What a ride November 8th is going to be for the world. And yet here's the thing with the Jupiter going into Pisces and it is important. It does matter. Pisces is the fourth house of the United States natal sky. That fourth house represents the opposition party to the ruling party. So right now the United States has a Democrat party in charge of the Senate, in charge of the Congress and in charge of the executive office with Joe Biden. There's going to be a red wave. There's no doubt in my mind it's going to shock a lot of Democrats. I don't think that I don't think they're just taking back the Senate or the you know the the upper executive branch. I think that the Republicans are going to sweep through and reclaim power in the congressional seats as well, leaving Joe Biden crippled in terms of anything he can do unless it's called executive orders or whatever. And there'll be a lot of panic, chaos, and and you know the United States is going to be looking really upset. You know, the Democrats are going to be very upset. There's going to be a jubilation in the Republican red state streets, that kind of thing. That's my prediction. That's the only way I can read it because Mercury is in the heart of the sun. He's not just conjunct the sun on the day of the midterms. And he's in a very um, positive place. 
He's in a very divinely inspired place. And yet when Jupiter moving through the fourth house of the USA natal sky, and this divinely inspired place that is happening, you know, with the Neptune, I mean, sorry, with the, the Mercury in the heart of the sun on an eclipse, which is in Scorpio, you know, the sun's in Scorpio with Mercury, Kazemi, the sun, and the big full moon and Taurus across the way. That's a part of the United States natal sky as well. Every chunk of 12 houses means something for the US of A. So it's important also to put context on where this is happening in the U.S. sky. You know, how does that imply that there's something also going on in a chunk of the United States meaningfulness part of the sky? And the way that looks to me, in my humble opinion, oops, shoot, my recording just about stopped. I just lost internet signal. Can you guys, like, did I wonk out on you guys? I'm going to pause the recording and check the internet. Hang on. Okay, stabilized internet. It bumped me down to the slow speed. It does that sometimes. I'm so sorry about that. Anyway, back to the United States. So the Taurus part where the big full moon is happening on the day of the midterm elections, um, full moon in Taurus um, around 16 degrees is in the United States, sixth house of the work and labor force. Okay. Or the econ economics of things like uh, what do you call employment, the employment rates, uh, the workforce and stuff like that. And you know, the jobs, the jobs numbers or stuff like that. And with the other side of the story, the 12th house, that's that sort of secret backroom deals and hidden enemies and negotiations that could be going on behind the scenes. And that's Mercury in the heart of the sun. There may be some kind of cool backroom negotiations going on that have nothing to do with the election itself. That could be also about trying to uh, negotiate uh, down what could look like a escalation of the nuclear threat with the Ukraine story, uh, reminding me very much of a Bay of Pig sky. All right, keep that in mind too. But I do think that there's going to be a red wave. Jupiter in the USA fourth house looks very strongly like that. Lastly, no, that's it. That's all I'm going to say about it. Okay, so we're going to do the all signs. Uh, again, remember, if you don't know your rising sun, because it's the most accurate, it represents your birth time. As you slice into reality, it's where the eastern horizon lines up on the symbolic tropical zodiac at the time of your birth, at, you know, it's where the sun would rise if the sun was going to be rising. So listen for that first, but then you can listen to your sun because it can be about purpose. Or if you have a stellium, I have my sun, moon, and a couple other planets and areas. I always get very accurate delineations by listening to Aries or you know, knowing my Aries reading for the month ahead and kind of thing like that. And um, your moon can be how you feel, your emotional set point. In India, they always have you look at your moon sign. And, you know, these readings act as if your moon is the ascendant ruler or is on the ascendant, as if your sun is on the ascendant. When we go like, Lori, Aries, Aries, Aqu uh, Aries rising sun and moon, I'm acting as if my sun, which is really in my natal third house, is is a first house placement, okay? As if it's my rising sign, not my sun. Just so you know how this YouTube stuff works. All astrologers are doing the same thing. Okay, so guys, let's get rolling and, and I'll show you the sky and then we'll do all signs as I show you what the sky looks like as Jupiter is moving in to the sign of Pisces. Okay, I'm pulling up the sky for everyone to take a look at. And when I pull up the sky, I want to talk just generally about it and then we're going to go all signs. So hang in there with me, okay? Um, I want to point out a couple of things. You can see that Jupiter on the 28th, actually, but, you know, I'm queuing it here, is sliding into, um, into the sign of Pisces, going backwards. Our, the red color means retrogradation on the software. And you can also see that when he's doing this, he's going to be making aspects to some of the planets that I've left in here. And this is meaningful. And I want to take one of them out because I meant to take out Hygieia. All right, I do apologize uh, because it's she's at the early degrees and it's not particularly useful. I know you guys are still seeing the chart. It just navigates me away from the chart. All right. All right. So here's the thing. Bottom line is that he's creating energetic connections to a few planets as he's going back to 28 degrees. Certainly, he's going to be sextiling or loving up Pluto. This is good news. This is wealth and power and goodness with a benefit planet. And as he retrogrades to 28 stations on November 23rd, he's still going to be within two degrees of Pluto. So Pluto's feeling some Jupiter's uh, sweetness. This can definitely deescalate what could be a plutonium kind of a nuclear strike threat. This could hopefully uh, mitigate that. Second of all, he's also going to be forming a relationship with Mars, who is currently retrograding through the sign of Gemini. Now it's, you know, 
Mars is going to the lower degrees and he's kind of chasing after Jupiter who stations at 28, but they're still, you know, in a relationship here and it's called a square. So there is some tension in the sky, October 28th to December the 20th between the God of war in the sign of brotherly love, neighbors fighting against neighbors, civil war, civil strife, or brother against brother, humanity. It's a war in the sign of people. The Gemini twins are human beings. A lot of the signs are animals. And so this is like the war story, basically, between brothers. I mean, Ukraine and Russia, they're brothers. Half the 40% of Ukraine speaks Russian. People are, have voted to go back to Russia on the eastern edges of Ukraine, apparently. Don't get me started. I'm not a Putin apologist. As people keep trying to call me, I'm just like, look at history for freak sakes. And I don't take things at face value. But with this Mars square from Jupiter, you can see Jupiter, benefit God of fairness, justice, you know, good things happening. It's trying to find a solution, right? It's 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 attention, of course, because God of War just wants to fight. Um, but Mars is retrograding, and maybe uh, you know he's a malefic in retrogradation. It could be that he's going to be subversive in his war tactics, you know, stealthy, um, sneaky. Okay, there's a problem with that. But anyway, Jupiter's trying to help out, especially after November 23rd. Um, there's a kind of a broad connection called a trine of goodness and flow between the Scorpio stellium that's emerging as Mercury joins in with the sun and Venus and the south node. That's where those eclipses are happening, like the November 8th eclipse and the October 25th one, you know, on that axis. And this is kind of like there's a party in Scorpio and Jupiter is loving up the party in a whole sign trying. Now he doesn't really talk to any of these planets in, in the beginning, right? When he first gets into this part of the sky, and there's a reason he doesn't talk to them. He doesn't talk to them because it's a whole sign connection, but it's a degree-based not connection, right? By degree, they're not actually communicating. So they have a kind of like faint communications line between Jupiter flowing the positivity to Scorpio. And that's a very troubled area. There was an October 25th there, eclipse there at venus with a corrupted venus for love and money definitely downdraft in the markets i mean if it's not already happened i'm recording this video on date the date the date oh god i don't even know what day it is you know what i mean uh, october 21st goes to my patreon community first and then you guys get it so they're gonna have a good swipe of ad free content from me so if you want to join my patreon community come come jump aboard for only five bucks a month you get all this stuff way ahead of the rest of the world but it, it it looks to me that the goddess of peace in her debilitated state, she's still under the beams of the sun until early December. And so, and she's in a sign that she doesn't like, but Jupiter's trying to work with her here. And so if you take her as the god of peace in a kind of Mars ruled war type sign, stealthy war at that, you can see as time progresses and Jupiter's getting ready to go direct, especially here. Around November 14th, there could be a turning point in war things, things to do with wars, whether it's Taiwan, China, or, you know, protests in Iran, maybe, or the women's protests, turning point, turning points, or turning points, more particular Ukraine and Russia, especially since that Putin may have a first house ascendant Venus, et cetera, in Scorpio. So this could be some treaties or some resolutions in that war story sometime after November 14th. And even more likely around December 1st, 2nd, 3rd, as Venus begins to become more an evening star and is a visible planet again. And we do like that even uh, Mercury participates here, you know, at the end of the story around the 16th. So look for big turning points around difficult circumstances in the world and in your own life. Now, huh, the Scorpio part of the sky can also be, yes, Ukraine, war, Putin, stealth things behind the scenes deals. It also means something else. Um it is relevant and relative to relevant and relative to the idea that any secrets that have been held back and the humanity doesn't know in any possible way, that's a Scorpio part of the sky. And I think that this ongoing Jupiter energy to that Scorpionic stellium is going to lead to some revelations, you know, some big reveals, that kind of thing. Now I have COVID brain. Everyone knows that, right? So if I, I talk slow, sometimes if people say I talk too fast, <laughs> if I talk, uh, too slow i apologize okay i'm doing my best here to like keep my brain working i am on all the good things cursed in sync and it's not that bad it's getting better day by day but i did have covid back in 
uh, the third week of September, I was in bed for three days, had a fever, had a headache, had no other symptoms, but it's, but getting my brain fog out of, out of gear is where I'm at. And some people do know that I'm not vaccinated. I'm not an anti-vaxxer. I, I don't, I'm going to tell you all my personal reasons for that choice, but uh, I hate when people label people. I hate that feature, but I want to tell you as a 60 year old woman being sick for three days, maybe never having had COVID before the first time I could get my hands on a test to double check. I was positive, you know, the latest Omicron variant, which is probably what I had, BA5, certainly didn't seem to be that bad to me. It seemed like a, a a flu. It didn't seem like a cold, but it seemed like a flu. But anyway, get ready, though. It's possible, as I mentioned earlier, that with this return, I didn't quite spell it out. I should have. With this return of Jupiter to co-present with Neptune, we're going to see another wave of some kind of new variant. And everyone's going to freak out. I know that's going to happen, but it won't be so bad. Or Jupiter spilling secrets about vaccines, Pfizer, adverse effects, uh, efficacy, et cetera. The CDC just put the COVID vaccine in its childhood vaccine um, recommendations. And there's a lot of uproar because most kids, 86% have had COVID already in, in the United States and around the world, is breezed through it. And the risk to the children is very low where the risk of an adverse event like myocarditis is very high. So there's a lot going on in the world that people are disagreeing with and uh, we'll see a lot of dirt come out. In fact, um, someone just put out a book in a movie called The Real Anthony Fauci. I'm not telling you I'm on a conspiracy junket i'm not but it does disclose a lot of vested interest he has in the pharmaceutical industry and the money he's been receiving from them all right enough of that let's move forward and get away from more pandemics and talk about your life your life because your life is different than the big picture story it impacts you specifically and astrology in my humble opinion is a portal to co-creation it's where you can have a conscious awareness of what the sky is up to i would say made the sky tell you two stories and you can collaborate with it now if you're listening to this video on my live premiere where i'm in the chat room with you before we get started can you hit my like button please and when you do it tells youtube's algorithms to share everything uh, that I'm putting out. And if you get a uh, wind of the video before October 31st, I have a big draw giveaway, 10 prizes for readings and course freebies because I passed a 10,000 subscriber mark at the end of September. And I would love for you to be in the draw. How do you get in the draw? Easy. You sign up for my Cosmic Moonshine newsletter, we get a week of weekly astrology news, and why not? You get a bunch of other free gifts for me when you sign up, including a 30% discount code off. As soon as you sign up, you're in the draw. And I'm doing it live on Halloween day, dressed like a witch, or you subscribe to my channel and tell me in the comments that you subbed. Otherwise I won't be able to tell and I'll, your name will go in a draw and ah, it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to have a party, a Halloween day, dressed like a witch. It's going to be a hoot. I'm going to do it live. But if you don't, if I don't do it live, I'll reach out and find you to make sure you know that you won. Okay. Let's get rolling. <laughs> oh, I'm an Aries sun and moon. So I relate a lot and mercury <laughs> i relate a lot to you aries so aries you guys are having the movement of jupiter regressed back through your 12th house where he was before as i said in the beginning he was there may 13th to july 28th of 2021 he was there december 28th to may 10th of 2000 and 22, like December of 21 to May of 22, and October 28th to December 20th. Here we go again. Now, you know, this part of the sky where he's moving is a spiritual place in your chart. It's the 12th house. It's like God, moksha, liberation, spiritual awakening. It's karma. And Jupiter here brings spiritual teachers to you, but also just teachers. You may start studying or learning something that's very important for your life's path and dharma. You may pick up a new spiritual philosophy. Um, I certainly did some studying during the one of those transits. It was um, my journey through archetypal astrology with my teacher, Ren Butler, corresponded to um, one of these Jupiter transits. I believe my memory is a little off right now, but it would have been December 28th to May 10th. And so I was learning from a new teacher. And you may find that you can undo your addictions and self-defeating habits and patterns. Now, I gave it a good go. I have to tell you that. I am a wine lover, and I love to drink wine every day with my meals. And I really, really gave it a shot between the first five months of 2022 to like sober up 
and I joined a group called Summer Sisters and stuff. And not like I'm a lush really, but it's not good for my body in a daily habit. And I did make some progress, but what's interesting, I know that as Jupiter is coming back here, it's going to fortify that decision I, I've been making. And uh, so you'll see a lot of your addictions and bad habits fall away. I'm already, I haven't had wine for three and a half weeks as I get ready for this transit. Um, that's because I had COVID now the smell and taste of wine it makes me feel nauseous. Um, but anyway, um, so your addictions, your weed, your, your vape, your alcohol, whatever else you could be substancing on to escape, some of that could fall away, especially with Jupiter uh, touching down with Neptune, the god of addictions, okay, and also mental illness. Um, also, somebody that has been sick in a hospital in your life that's not even you, this could be a good news turnaround story for them. A hospital, insane asylums, incarceration in jails, places of isolation. Jupiter can liberate somebody who's been in a jail, in a, in a hospital, in a mental institution in your life as he goes backwards in the last degrees of Pisces. Strange but true. If you make money from barter and trade internationally um, or whatever, you could get a boost in your income here, like PayPal Stripe processors like I use. And you may also find the other piece of good news is, uh, drum roll please, foreign land trips and travel. Basically, the 12th and the 9th can indicate foreign lands and foreign shores. And when Jupiter back ends here, you'll go back to someone, you're, you'll plan a trip to somewhere you've been before. You may not actually take it, you may plan it, or you could take it. And if you do, it's been October 28th and December 20th, or set in motion the wheels of that trip book your tickets get it ready Just decide on that journey okay um last if you're looking for a guru a spiritual teacher or a guide to put her neptune is the full monty this is like getting your yogananda parmahansa swami muktananda you know, Mother Mira vibe going. So you could find yourself in the orb of some profound spiritual guidance teacher energy as a result of Jupiter making his last foray into your natal 12th house. All right. Moving forward then, see how simple this is. And oh, wait, I want to say one more thing. That I want, I think I might want to focus a bit on that Pluto energy too for each sign and just say this. Um Jupiter loving up that Pluto in a sextile can bring a lot of you Aries an up level in your career during that last salvo, um, in your reputation, in your power that you can wield within your, your public career, purpose and reputation, part of your sky. Jupiter is going back and really digging in with Pluto, which he wasn't really doing before. He was whizzing by Pluto in April, May, but he wasn't digging in to really talk with Pluto. And so this is where a real depth of power, transformation and wealth can emerge through um, a opportunity or a lucky break regarding career but backroom deals and negotiations of the 12th or even just simply money stemming from things you're up to in your career that you can receive from international stores or foreign lands especially with payment paypal and stripe as payment processors for that without having to go traveling salesman wise around the world okay i hope that makes some sense for you guys let's roll i'm going to try to give everyone a fair share of time because i know that i tend to spend more time on the earlier signs oh i apologize we're moving ahead by the wrong increment it's ours to get the ascendant forward all right so you are taurus you are the bull you are steadfast and steady and fixed and here comes jupiter loving up you from the 11th house of his joy. He loves being here. This is where he has a big party of generosity. This is where he becomes your genie in a bottle and your fairy godfather, especially helping you to actualize some of your deepest dreams, hopes, and wishes for your life. This is also friends and allies as benefactors. You could find that people in high places support you. Friends have hot tips and favors for you. People want to give you a leg up. Your career gains, great gains from your career or reputation, how spilling out to you, especially given there's a sextile to Pluto in the ninth. If you're ongoing legal or court cases, if any nature like alimony, palimony, spousal, inheritance disputes, um, any kind of court issues that involve money should resolve in your favor, but maybe wait for till after November 23rd to, to see the evidence of that as Jupiter stations direct. Also, the father and father patriarchal figures in Vedic astrology is the ninth house. I have found it to be accurate. I won't get all the reasons why, but it does work. So a, a very powerful Plutonian father-like patriarchal boss, big boss figure can, can, can work in your behalf to increase your wealth, to increase your gains from your career, to bring you favors from people in high places. 
it's a really lovely transit, especially for the Taurus rising, right? And the sun and moon is kind of, yes, but it's really accurate for you rising Taurus people. And you've been going through a lot, going through a big transformation of self as you got North Node eclipses, I mean, in earnest, you know, from January of 2022 to July of 23, moving through the house of you, it's the big reinvention of you. Some of you, it's like the gender reveal. I mean, like big energies are shifting for you. You're recreating the I am blank. I'm a wife. I'm a husband. I'm a spouse. I'm a carpenter. I am a brain surgeon. I am a male. I'm a female. I don't know, whatever. You can have these kinds of shifts because it's Uranian energy, sudden dramatic energy changes. I won't go into it, but it, you of all people need to go back and listen to my big boom webinar. It's talking about the 15 year change of your identity that was kicked off at the end of uh, uh, July and beginning of August. It's in my transits playlist. But in the meantime, that aside, Jupiter suddenly is sweet loving up your ascendant. So especially the last 25 to 29 degree rising sign, sun or moon, people get a lot of Jupiter juice of luck, opportunity, expansion, growth, prosperity, wealth, yay, <laughs> hitting you directly from a money house. So what's to complain about? Because 11 is one of the money houses. Now it's pennies from heavens can be bringing windfalls, not necessarily through gaming. That's usually the fifth house, but it, you never know. Could be lotteries as well. Could be inheritances, tax rebates, um, chunky money, or selling a property and getting more out of it than you ever thought you would. I'm not sure what it is. Certainly with Mars moving through your 12th house, some of you may sell a piece of real estate or land anytime between now and next March, but this little sweet spot October 28th to December 20th is where chunky money, windfalls, good financial outcomes can land on your doorstep. There's a lot of Jupiter love to your house of primary partnership where it's been pretty stressed out by South Node eclipses. So, you know, you may have a relationship on the go, but it's kind of wobbly or it's been having ups and downs or... Or you may be looking for somebody and it's not quite materialized. Um, Jupiter in a trine to your seventh house and those, all the planets will be muckraking through there um, in the early part of the story, like between October 28th and mid-November, can bring in a new, very powerful, very positive relationship, but likely through friendship circles and groups of belonging. An introduction from a friend, you go to the curtain circle and you meet your one, that kind of thing. But if you're with somebody, some of that turbulence in that relationship or the uncertainty may begin to smooth smooth out. Okay. Especially if you're a later degree, let's say 20 to 29 degree Taurus rising, then sun and moon smoothing out those ruffles in the relationship part of the story. You know, you're having to focus more on you and learn to let go of your hyper focus on your ma marriage partner or the seeking thereof of a marriage partner. Okay. And so there's the need for balance is what your sky is trying to accomplish. And and yet Jupiter, sweet loving, the descendant, ascendant access, it's lovely energy for your health, for your optimism, for you feeling good and lucky and hopeful about life, for revisioning your life and what your plans are for your life with the highest dreams possible while you get a support structure or flow from your significant other or the entrance of a new powerful and happy and friendly, joyful, significant other with soulmate qualities. Okay. Gemini, sun, moon, and rising. Well, Gemini, 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 guess what? This is a story of your career getting yet another um, Jupiter blessing. Um, don't forget, back May 13th to July 28th, 21, there was a tiptoe event, like a little bit of a, a career boost. And then December 28th of 21 to May 10th of 22, and another little uptick for you, continuing that journey of success through your career, reputation, and status in life. And then October 28th, December 20th is the grand finale of your career, luck, success, success and expansion. Certainly, expansion. Certainly for a lot of you, it could be letting go of one bad job to start a new one, south no transit through the house of work and slavery and jobs. Um, it could be uh, the boss uh, seeing your value, giving you a promotion. Um, if you're in, employed independently as I am, you might find that this is an up level of your ability to reach an audience, to be a powerful leader, teacher, guide in the public eye, especially with Neptune. Uh, if you're doing any mystical, magical careers or anything involving film and video, which of course YouTube and Instagram reels are all about, you can really up level in October 28th to December 20th, especially after November 23rd, when he goes direct. Now he's doing the love up with Pluto, the wealth planet in your eighth house of taxes, tax rebates, inheritances, chunky money, spousal money, shared resources. <clears throat> 
business partner money inheritances. I mean, no one wants to get news of an inheritance, but Jupiter can bring it on because he is trying sextiling Pluto in the inheritance house. Uh, there, it could be an inheritance or money coming through from a male or father figure uh, as well because of the sun that's activating here, especially around November 17th, but all through October 28th, mid November, it's possible that a, you know, an uncle, aunt, um, a great grandfather, fa- grandfather, or even a father figure could um, dispense money your way in inheritance type situations. The other thing I want to say is that Pluto here in your eighth house can really lead to some significant stock market investment wealth. And we're all getting caught in a downdraft that I predicted and every decent astrologer did in the stock markets that won't turn around to the spring of 2023. However, and, and it never really will, it's going to kind of bear market out slowly. Um, but I do think for you, this could be an opportunity to invest. Jupiter's opportunity, wealth is investing in the markets is Pluto. You may hear of an opportunity to put some money down somewhere because of something's beat up, a stock is beat up or something, and, and it may feel like a golden opportunity to take advantage of a dip or a downturn. If you have cash on the side, I would suggest that's what I'm seeing here. Uh, be careful for fantastical illusions about the propensity for success, but I do like the, the mini grand trine forming here around November 17th for a lot of you. Gemini rising, especially to capitalize on some financial prosperity through the stock markets. But don't take financial advice from me That's or health advice. I am not that person. And uh, that's my disclaimer. Um, also, Jupiter is loving up the trine of energy that will be uh, October 28th to about the middle of November uh, of, you know, the sun and Venus and Mercury will all be there earlier in your sixth house. And that can really open up career opportunities, jobs, new jobs, better jobs, better workspace, raises and promotions, better health as well. Okay. That's what you Geminis are getting up leveling all of the way. Uh, I got an incoming call. I'll take it and I'll be right back. Well, <laughs> sorry about that. That's because my daughter called me. And uh, and like any good mother, if your daughter calls, you always pick up. Um, so that was just that. Um, back to you. Um, all right. That was just a quick call with her. All right. Back to where I was. Um, am I recording? You know that, eh? that thing where I forget. Am I recording? Okay. Yeah. Sorry about that, guys. Now, if you're listening on my live premiere and you haven't hit my like button, I'm going to spank you. Hit my like button. It really helps the channel grow and tells YouTube that other people might like what I'm up to and they share it with a larger audience and it helps everything grow. Okay, so here we go. Um, Cancer, sun, moon, and rising sign. So the good news here is Jupiter is in a water trine as he back ends into Pisces to your identity and anyone with the late degrees let's say 25 to 29 degrees of cancer rising your sun or moon at those degrees you're really getting a huge saturation of concentrated jupiter juice love from the god of prosperity joy generosity growth and optimism in your ninth house what is that ninth house it's foreign lands foreign shores visas travel higher education courts and court cases and judges and spiritual philosophy and wisdom and knowledge and learning and academia and book publishing house and uh, the house of the father, father like figures. Okay. Got the gist, right? There's a lot going on in that ninth house. It's a spiritual house. Metacosmios between the worlds, attainment of the direct revelation of divine knowledge and wisdom through your own, you know, downloads can happen. So Jupiter can bring you a teacher basically here. It could be a spiritual teacher, could be a um, a pastor, a coach, a mentor, a guide energy. If you want that kind of thing, it's coming your way. And it could just be an instructor, like, cause this is like an academic house, right? So you may go for some instruction of some kind, holy heat wave. I'm going to open the window. My sister tells me never to do that. She doesn't want me to, but they keep their house at a thousand degrees. Hang on there. She's a cancer rising. Hang on. I'll be right back. Oh my God. I'm so hot. Given that it's kind of like winter here, (laughs) 
ish almost not quite but you know it's getting cold oh my god I'm so hot and I, I'm wearing I shit off the sleeve because I'm so warm at her home so anyway but it's my problem not hers um so cancer yeah so uh you know you can learn something this is very learning energy you know I, I some of you could study apply for a new school go back to school take some really important courses etc find a guru for sure Jupiter Neptune up the top of the sky now no, I think also for some of you, it looks like a trip, you know, you may be, you know, on the fence about taking a journey, but sometime between November, October 28th and December 20th, you decide to bite the bullet, plan the trip, take the trip, go on the trip you need the getaway, the sanctuary, the time out for some reason. As well, you know, Jupiter is sending beams of support to wealth building Pluto in your marriage and legal agreements and vows house as well as business partnering um this can really strengthen an existing marriage it's been going through a lot of transformation right since 2008 when pluto entered into your marriage house if you're a cancer rising and you've been married and it has been a swell time with no transformational growth edge i'm shocked <laughs> totally shocked okay um and now this is kind of like jupiter sends some blessings ninth house is a luck house in vedic astrology and uh it's also the house of the third marriage so you could have good prosperous lucky up levels in your third marriage you and in one of the vedic traditions that i use okay don't correct me on this i know what i'm talking about it's when it turns out to me to be the second marriage second house and this is the most accurate third marriage third house and uh some people do it differently uh and they call the second marriage the ninth house but that's based on the action of calling the, the ninth house third from seventh first marriage and third from seventh is siblings because in ancient india when your spouse died you married the brother okay that kind of vibe and we don't do that anymore so it's it, trust me the way i'm doing it works so if you have a third marriage and you're in it this blesses as a cancer rising the third marriage house and you've been under those jupiter blessings and all those ninth house meetings from may 13th to july 28th of 2021 so think about your primary marriage love partnership or business partnerships or new ones that started up under this influence back in 21 then december 28th to may 10th of 2022 december of 21 to may 10th of 22 as i said in the beginning in october 28th to december 20th sort of powering up new levels of goodness in your existing business and love relationships and legal agreements. Jupiter can be the judge in the ninth house and legal contracts, documents, vows, and oaths is the seventh. And this could really power up successful outcomes and agreements that require legal and court type attention, including visas as well for travel. If you plan a trip to go back and to go somewhere, it's likely somewhere you've been before. And you probably won't travel there until after Jupiter goes direct November the 23rd to December 20th, or actually buy those tickets or anything until that juncture, most likely. Okay. Um, I would say as well that, you know, this sort of stellium of planets, October 28th to mid November, that will be Venus and Mercury, Sun, and the, the node as well, uh, South Node K2, in your fifth house of romance, sexuality joy inspiration and the muse and your children well jupiter's loving this part of your sky up so even though it's been a gnarly south node transit maybe discombobulating your sexuality your romantic stuff your creativity or some ch challenges with one of your children they may not be challenging you they may have been going through some challenges this is kind of softening up jupiter's sending a little love beam sessions to the part of your sky if you have your own independent business which i do and my sister is at healing with nancy lynn.com she's brilliant i just had the most amazing live reiki session with her today because i'm visiting her and i just was blown away blown away i'll put her website below healing with nancy lynn.com she's genius she has distance healing as well and she's just as good at that anyway but you know what was why did it detour to her but anyway because she's cancer rising but anyway um your fifth house is your own business enterprise, your independent entrepreneurial stuff. And that gets a lot of love as well from Jupiter, who's also loving up your body, loving up your health, making you feel good, magnanimous, generous, and optimistic because he's trining you the house of you. Okay. So it's all very sweet for cancers. I don't even know what the downside could be. Don't fall for a guru promising you enlightenment in two weekends. Okay. That's the only downside here with the Neptune proximity. All right. Leo, sun, moon, and rising sign. 
Um, the energy of this sky is a Jupiter eighth house return. Don't forget that's a money house, right? Eighth house is your inheritances and tax monies and credit cards and loans and mortgages and how you leverage money, uh, share the money with your spouse or a business partner. Um, it's money that you don't work for the daily steady drip of, you know, need money, like a paycheck or a salary. So investments in the markets as well. Now, Jupiter can bless this part of your sky, Leos. Um, he was trying to bless it May 13th of 21, 2021 to July 28th of 21, but he barely got into that part of your sky. It was a teaser about some money uplift. Um, it also could have brought you into greater contact with teachings of occult mysteries like tarot, um, magic, ritual magic, um, even astrology, or tantra, kink, and super deep, intimate sex stuff red tantra and then december 28th to may 10th december 20th 21 to may 10th of 22 he was back here doing the full sweep of your eighth house again i told you the meanings up leveling lucking blessing you in that money house if there were secrets that need to be told especially from your family of origin they probably got expanded and released so you could know that information that you should know and could know for your highest good now he's back october 28th to december 20th but it's only in the first you know the last degree so there's a tight little range of influence most particularly his major activity is the pluto love up sextiling pluto in your sixth house of health challenges and health routines in the house of your workaday routines as well for health and work, your job place, your place of employment, or your employer, your employees, pets, 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 and tenancy. Now, I'm not going to pretend this is, could not look like a pet passing, but Jupiter sextile Pluto from the house of death would be a blessed ending. Like the, the, the dog or the cat was old and tired and incontinent and it was time to go. Blessed endings with pets, blessed endings with rental arrangements and tenancies that no longer serve you financially or otherwise. Um, same with jobs that you no longer need. Jupiter can bring blessed endings, which we don't often mention, but he can expand your health and expand your job and even maybe um, open up a gateway to some kind of new pet as well. You never know. Um, what else? Um, it's an inheritance transit. I mean, classic Jupiter eighth house, you know, bequeathment. So if you haven't had a bequeathment since this started, you know, this might be your last chance. And so there could be some relative who's getting ready to bequeath money to you, whether they're passing on or not, or just, you know, send you some money. Um, so this is a possibility too, certainly with the South Node through the uh, fourth house of the family of origin, mom and dad are down there. Uh, if you have an elderly aging parent, this could also be that story. Jupiter in that um, trine to the sun, which could be grandfather, father figure in the house of legacy wealth, suggests for some of you Leos, right? Leos, sun, moon, but more so rising sign, especially late degree Leo, um, where that sun is sitting in your fourth house, this could definitely look like a possible passing of an elder um, male figure in your family of origin that leads to some money for you, but blessed passing, significantly good endings, you know, the good death energy, time to go anyway. Um, we're all afraid of death, right? Like, oh no, death, 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 people die. Death is a part of life. It's a built-in part of the program. You can't escape that. And so what I like about Jupiter uh, energy when it's hooked up to Pluto, in this case, trining a sun, it forms a little mini grand trine, the very blessed energy. So if, this is literally like somebody is ready to go. It's time for that person to go. They're ready at a soul level to release this body and it may benefit you financially. That's what I'm saying. All right, continuing forward with the next part of the story. I think I covered you, Leos. I don't know what else to say. But invest in a stock, but be careful. Now, Neptune here is like going to kind of obfuscate sometimes, like the dream opportunity that's not so good when you look closer. Um, but Jupiter Direct, November 23rd onward, would be a good time to choose a stock market investment from a place of strength because you know that you're getting a deal or this could really fly in the future. But again, I'm not your advisor, so be very careful about that. Uh, you use your own good judgment and your own financial advisors as well. Um, all right, so we have the Virgo, sun, moon, and rising sign folk, especially rising sign. 
what's happening is Jupiter has gone back into your marriage house. Now, when I say marriage, you're dating someone, you're committed, it's monogamous, you're a thing, right? Doesn't have to be, here comes the bride or groom. And Jupiter coming back here, well, hang on, I have a terrible feeling I'm not recording. I am recording. <laughs> oh, okay. Jupiter coming back into your seventh house is loving up the relationship zone of the chart, business and love. Now, just before I go ahead, I bet you're watching me live on the premiere. And if you're one of those 150 you know, so people that usually show up, can you hit my like button? I would appreciate it. Helps my channel grow. It really does. It makes a big difference. All right. So the thing I want to say about this is that if you're already in a relationship, anytime Jupiter goes through the seventh house, he's going to up level it. So you're dating and then you're committed. You're committed and you move in together. You move in together, then you get engaged. You're engaged and then you get married, right? Set the wedding date, even whatever. These are up level stages of the relationship, expanding the relationship. Now, if you're in a relationship that's really bad for you and it sucks, 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 what does Jupiter do? He brings blessed endings, blessed endings. So both things are true. All right. It's either really, really good or it's time to cut out. And with Jupiter going through here, you have to go back and look at the other journeys, right? May 13th of 21 to July 28th of 2021, he ingressed into the first two degrees of your seventh house of marriage or relationship. And basically, you basically got a taste of it. And unless your, your Virgo rising is in the first like five degrees of Virgo, it probably didn't feel like all that much. But it was an attempt to boost you and lift you up in 2021 and make you feel more in love, more enchanted, more happy, more joyful in your marriage. So go back and really think about that Virgo rising, especially. Is that true? Of course, some of you may have ended your relationships then as well. And then the rest of the transits can be income, incoming new relationship for you, which is just as yeah, you, right? Um, then December 28th at the end of 21 to May 10th, he came whizzing, whizzing through your entire seventh house for every single Virgo. You got this crossing your descendant or your marriage point or your commitment point at some point. So blessed new teachers, blessed new guides, blessed new opportunities, blessed new relationships, endings of ones that were tired, especially marriages, blessed, blessed new beginnings for business partnerships. And if you're a Virgo who has to send things into the marketplace that you're have an audience or one-on-one -on -one clients, this also expanded those things for you in the first five months of 2022. And now October 28th to December 20th, it's the last pass, especially germane or relevant to uh, 25 degrees to 29 degree Virgo people, sun or moon, but more so rising. This is your concentrated juice, just like the early degree Virgos got back in May to July of 21. This is your time. This is your turn. Um, I would say that if you have legal agreements and contracts, negotiations, documents that need to be signed, vows and oaths, that kind of thing, agreements legally, this is a good thing for you. This is where Jupiter is sealing the deal, bringing you the outcome you want, blessing your finance, blessing your agreements that are legal. All right. So keep that in mind. He's powering up with Pluto in your fifth house, which is romance and children and money luck, speculation, taking risks, gambling, um, your own business enterprise. For some of you, it could look like selling a business, selling out your business, getting a new business partner. If you're entrepreneurial, um, it could look like some really good news from your child about their own power and success in life. Um, especially, you know, adult children can be the seventh and young children can be the fifth. So either which way you swing it, good powering up news for a child in your life. There's that Scorpio st and romance. If you're a single li li um, Virgo looking for love, um, Jupiter here. Pluto in your fifth in the sextile, <laughs> it could bring in a very trans loving, transformative, game changing new romantic love union for the single Virgoians of the world, especially after the 23rd of November as Jupiter moves direct. Jupiter exalts your house of friendship and some of these uh, new relationships may come through friends and allies and larger social networks if you're looking for the new, th new relationship, especially. Now, also, I think that I would say anyway, that that stellium and Scorpio from the end of October to the middle of November, which will have sun, moon, Venus, and the South node, the charts progress now, but trust me, they're all there till about mid November. Um, this is like a huge love up from the trips and travel part of your sky going off and taking a journey or a trip, 
um, could be for leisure, pleasure, or romance as well with that Pluto activation. Um, this could be an ability to connect or deep, deepen a connection with a sibling or extended family member, such as an aunt, uncle, cousin, niece, or nephew. Um, this could open up a doorway of new prosperity with local environment stuff like a shop, a tienda, a store, a restaurant, especially if that's any part of your story. Uh, this could open up a kind of um, opportunity to find a teacher, Jupiter in the seventh, of great power for you, Pluto, that you want to study or learn from, but not academia. This would be more like taking a seminar, a course, a skills-based class of some kind. October 28th to December 20th. Okay. My daughter's a Virgo rising. I can see her taking something in that window of time, like, you know, uh, you know, to do with one of our side passions, like she's a bodybuilder, weight builder, that kind of thing. Uh, workout girl, works in a gym, that kind of thing. I mean, Jupiter is in a kind of broad sextile for every single Virgo to that Uranus North node energy in your ninth house. So this definitely does smack for some of you a foreign land travel, opening up opportunities to do that because there's a lot of this energy with the Stellium and Scorpios, trains, planes, and automobiles. So some of you may be looking at some really significant travel opportunities and journeys, especially November 23rd to December 20th, either being taken or, or engineered or planned in that window of time. Hmm. I'm just pondering. I don't want to forget anything. Okay. I think we're good. Libra, sun, moon, and rising sign people. And in your case, this is a six house Jupiter returning to that part of your sky for past number three grand finale. Um, you know, this is your workhouse your health house, especially to get rid of issues. He will bring solutions to health challenges, Libras, when he is moving through your sixth house. And he will find ways and means to get things all resolved. Um, if you have a job that you want to get or go back to or you know, return to, he's retrograding. You might go back to an old place of employment or get hired at an old company or an old structure that you were a part of. He exalts Jupiter, exalts your 10th house of career and reputation, Libra. Really good for your career and your work stuff as he retrogrades back into your sixth house. Now, remember, if you go back in time, it's useful. I mean, at the beginning of the video, I said, everyone go back to 2010. But I mean, so you can do that. But I'm not going to remind you every video, every single sign. If you watch the beginning, you know this stuff. Um, but May 13th, to July 28th, um, he was in your sixth house of health and work routines, pets and tenancies, um, sometimes debt, like credit card debts, because it's karmic debt and sometimes literal debt. And then October 28th to December 20th, he was there again. And I'm sorry, December 28th to May 10th, December 28th of 21 to May 10th of 22. And now he's here again, October 28th to December 20th. Now, all of these can connect thematically in some way, if you would take the time to figure it out. You know, December 28th to May 10th, he moved quickly through the entirety of your natal sixth house. So this could be swift moving opportunities and things to do with work and health and things really starting to pick up speed in the work routines. And whether it's your day job or your side job, it doesn't matter. It's what you're doing in the daily work grind. Um, some of you may have gotten pets. Some may have you gotten more than one pet, like bunny rabbits galore, Jupiter here, or great opportunities to lease a property or sell a pro uh, lease a property, sell a property, buy a property, rent a property, because all that Jupiter energy sextiles your fourth house of land and real estate. So what does October 20th to December 20th bring to complete that and highlight that those stories in your life? And it's lovely, definitely pay up a debt here. Jupiter can bring blessing, prosperity, and wealth in a debt-related house, credit card debt, mortgages, pay them off. So October 28th to December 20th, especially after November 23rd, when Jupiter goes direct, you may see the most, yay, you, financial debt repayment, restructuring, letting go, refinancing, selling a property, buying a property, renting a new place, exiting a new place, getting a new pet, all of that stuff. Now, this is really um, also connected to Pluto in your fourth house of land, home, and real estate. So for a lot of you, this does connect to things to do with property and where you live, where whether you're renting or buying and you're getting this last yay Jupiter thing for the next 12 years. So you don't get it for 12 more years. So October 28th to December 20th, capitalize on this super lucky sky. And lastly, there's a Scorpio stellium at the end of October through to middle of November of, you know, Venus, Mercury, sun, and stuff know that we'll be during that time time in your second house of earnings. Now the South has been leaking your paycheck money. It feels like you're 
spending a lot and not making a lot or money's going out, but not coming in. You're stressed about money in that regard. Salary paycheck monies can stress you out, but, but you're expanding in your eighth house with the North node there. That's leveraging money, bank loans, other people's money. So not to worry or investment money's taking off with the rags to riches thing. But what I like about Jupiter in your sixth house is he's flowing in this lovely trying to a Scorpio stellium in your second house. So this is where some of that picks up a little bit more energy, especially closer to the middle of November as all the planets become late Scorpio planets. And you see some silver lining around your finances. Okay, so get ready for that. Um, feeling of the coffers filling up or luck and blessings around the money story. All right, Libra, I think I got you covered. Scorpios, my son's a Scorpio rising. It's my one of my best friends with Scorpio son. I like Scorpio people. You're private, not secretive. You're mysterious and your still waters do run deep. Um, you also have such a natural look, way of looking more deeply into what life is all about. And my son writes this soulful music that's really beautiful. So he's a songwriter, singer in his off his day job life. So one of the things about Jupiter and Pisces, is it's soulful. And this is going to feel good for you. And it's going to be Jupiter in your muse house where you get inspired to write, create, paint, make music, uh, you know, write a book, whatever, or your independent business. And you're going to juice that up as well. So your creativity can go through the roof, basically. And your procreativity. So if you're a Scorpio rising and you're a woman, this could make you fertile and have a baby, get pregnant or whatever. And if you are a man and you're the one with the uterus with you could also get pregnant because your sperm could activate that. And um, I would say as well, that Scorpio stellium that's happening um, October 28th to the middle of November, especially closer to the middle of November, it's all about your like I'm mean, like you know TMI you but you know Venus is the ovaries and the spermatosis kind of thing in the Indian astrology and that Venus will be going through the house of your body so ramping up your ability to be procreative and creative at, at once as well as attractive and charismatic and love and love how you look and up your wardrobe and get your hair done and all that good stuff um, in your good goth style as Venus is in a rave time when she's hanging in Scorpio and this is Jupiter trining Venus as she's going through the house of you can look like fertility on steroids. So if you want a child, this is really good. And if you're not looking to get you or yourself, or your partner pregnant, then watch out, of course. And um, especially with your Ron is sextiling the house of pregnancy. So a lot of you could accidentally get pregnant. So be careful if that's not something you want but otherwise it's october 28th to december 20th so don't forget may 13th of 21 to july 28th what was going on with your muse your creativity your children your pregnancy your inspiration your independent business enterprise your fun your play your sexuality and your joy because on december 28th to may 10th so december 20th last year to may 10th of 22 it's on game on again and fifth house matters and then october 28th to december 20th is the grand finale especially 23rd of November, because then Jupiter will go direct. And then a real momentum will happen here. Now there's a money luck energy here, right? You can win money at ca a casino, gambling, gaming, uh, lottery tickets. Jupiter can bring that on here, especially if you're a late degree Scorpio anywhere. Let's say, let's for, for, let's just say between 25 to 29, for sure. Degrees of Scorpio, sun, moon, or rising. You're in an extraordinary time of financial prosperity, luck opportunity with that Jupiter, especially after November 23rd, as he goes direct. Sometimes it can look like he's retrograding in there and you had a lottery ticket, you stuck in a drawer, you never checked it. And then sometime after November 23rd, you find it, you pull it out of your sock drawer, you run it through the machine and you won. You know, I mean, it can be that weirdly mysterious. A child or one of your children could have some luck, you know, if they're still under your roof, especially uh, during this window of time. It is not a bad time to make a stock investment with Mars moving through your eighth house or go back and reinvest in something. But be cautious, of course, the markets are jumbly and jagged and downdrafting pretty radically, probably throughout November into December. And so, you know, waiting and biding your time for a stock pick could work. But be cautious, be cautious, because Jupiter is squaring Mars. So there's some tension there in your eighth house of stock investments and inheritances. Um, Jupiter is also the house of the father. Um, Jupiter is squaring Mars in the house of death. 
it's, it's a really roundabout way of saying maybe there's some bequeathment inheritance from a father, father figure type person coming through for some of you, Scorpio rising, especially um, October 28th to December 20th. Now, Pluto is moving through your third house of siblings, aunts, uncles, cousins, trips and travel, local environment, neighborhood. And he is working uh, into a beautiful power up sextile uh, energy with that Jupiter. And this could really open up some opportunities through a sibling or an extended family member, relative, or something in your local environment that's going to bring you some prosperity. I mean, come on, it's a money luck house, Jupiter's a money god of luck, yeah. So some prosperity in those directions. The third house can be the place where you're really working it in the communication, selling and marketing, and often sales, you know, energy promotions and sales, then maybe you're going to have a breakthrough moment of some success if your job involves any of those things. Um, it's a house of writing, muse, uh, Jupiter's in the house of the muse. So some breakthrough ideas or breakthrough moments in some writing project for some Scorpios, for sure, no doubt about it, especially late degree Scorpio, sun, moon, and rising. And anything else to tell you about this? Because I don't want to forget anything. Ooh, um, I think that's it. I think I'm done. Okay. Hope that was useful. Don't forget to like, subscribe. Don't forget to hit that bell for our notifications, especially if you're in the live premiere with me. All right. Sa fiery Sagittarius people. This is angular, right? Jupiter's in the fourth house. So it, it's at a 90 degree angle to your rising sign. That's what we mean by angular. And then that makes it very powerful because angular uh, placements are always strong and they turn the wheel of our destiny. The stakes of the chart, the kentrons or the kendras are in motion. Jupiter brings blessed changes of direction for you regarding home, property, real estate, relationship to mom and dad, particularly mom. It's a legacy wealth position where you could inherit money from a family member, especially a mother father figure. Jupiter has been here before, right? He was in your fourth house, May 13th, 21 to July 28th. In fact, I know a Sag son who inherited some money because his mom passed in that window. Uh, December 28th to May 10th, you know, 28th of last year to May 10th of this year, 22, Jupiter whizzed through your fourth house. Now that could definitely have expanded your home, you added on, you could add an extension, you bought a better home, you sold a home, you made some significant developments of positivity and joy and expansion within your home, private life environment. And um, again, don't forget that legacy wealth inheritance edge. And then later now, here we are, October 28th, the grand finale to December 20th. Now, Jupiter will go direct November 23rd. This suggests that you're going back over some old ground that you were developing, particularly in April, May of last year, and you're putting things in place regarding homeland and real estate themes and where you live and your property and your private life. And now you're going back, you know, on the 28th of October, backing up into that part of your sky until November 23rd. So like my ex-husband's a Sag son and he's going to be going to Portugal to lay this, the, the foundation of moving there. No, no doubt about it. this has been in the works for a long time. Jupiter has been trying to expand his, his, his where he lives, right? He wants to get out of Canada. And, um, and so he just, always, just told me recently he's going to be gone November 7th, right? To, I don't know what, the 21st back to Portugal. But then on the 23rd, everything goes forward. For all of you, uh, Sages, suns, moons, and rising, well, you go forward now. Things could get momentum, springboard ahead. Time to put the house in the market. You get an offer. You get a sale. Um, you find a better property to live in. You find the ideal property to live in. Things, the wheels of are in motion regarding these themes. Pluto is sextiling this in your second house of earnings. And Pluto is trying to bring you power and transformation in the earnings house and the possessions house. And this could bring a powerful new possession like a home or a powerful new bit of money your way from real estate buying and selling, moving and new agreements around the land and real estate. As well, you got that Scorpio stellium in your 12th house through end of October. You know, October 28th to about the 14th of November. And this like Venus, Mercury, Sun combo loving up Jupiter in your fourth. It's definitely good for things you're doing behind the scenes to do with up leveling your home and your real estate and your prosperity and your earnings, you know, backroom deals and negotiations. Um, the 12th house involves as well, 
things to do with your own self-sabotage, karmic bad habits and patterns and self-undoing. And of course, Jupiter is sending beams of love to a stellium there. And you may just kind of cut out of the ways you really screw your own life up and quit that stuff already. No more. I mean, you're going through a long Mars transit in the house of marriage. And I mean, for a lot of you, it's going to really be difficult, a conflict with, with your partner, maybe the one aggressively maneuvering difficult conversations or endings for you. So I want you to be aware that there's a lot of good going on here, but that Jupiter squaring Mars and what the goodness that you're experiencing, your partner may not agree with you or your business partner may not agree with you. So you may have to deal up conflict about your ideal dream home plans. And, you know, the 12th house is foreign lands. When I go to my ex-husband, Fergus, I mean, he's looking to move to Portugal. And so there's this big love up in the sky saying, move to Portugal because we love the stellium and Scorpio if you're moving to a foreign land. Yeah. Change of, of homeland, really. Okay. Um, any last words about it? You know, just being more joyful within the environment of your domestic and private life. That's really what Jupiter is trying to expand your faith and enthusiasm and a joy and abundance regarding your home and private life, as opposed to your career, as opposed to your hustle. Okay. It's really a lovely transit. Capricorn, sun, moon rising sign. Now, you earthy mountain goat, sea goat type folk, feminine sign of Saturn, stoic, hardworking, disciplined, and resource wealth building people in general. Pluto's been going through the house of you since 2008. I always talk about this. I, I, I'm Aquarius rising. I get it next. And so all, all, all power to you for getting through that life transforming, game changing, deepening of your identity and your true reason for being on planet Earth. Um, as you power up as a death and rebirth journey of the last, oh, Effie, my God, 2008 till now, until 2024. So all that said and done, Capricorn, Jupiter, the god of luck and blessings, is sextiling that Pluto from the third house, trips and travel, journeys, siblings, aunts, uncles, cousins, nieces, and nephews are blessing you. And maybe as well, blessings from things that you wish to write, or communicate, or message the world. And if you do any online platform stuff, Jupiter blesses that as well. Jupiter coming into your third house, he's been there for a while, right? Back in 2013, May to July 28th. And then he's, and you know, if you go all the way back to 2010, when he was there, what did you do regarding neighborhood stuff that really loved you up? And that was my ex-husband and I, he, he got the love up this of a seaside beach house, basically, is what we moved to together because we could for, afford it because we both shared the rent. So you could have an expansion of your neighborhood that brings you joy and love and optimism and hope. And certainly it could involve a move for some of you. And with this October 28th to December 20th timeframe, look to November 23rd for the real momentum, for the real goods to start to really show up with all those third house meanings. The stellium in your 11th house of good spirit of basically October 28th to no, mid-November, um, like around the 13th, 14th, it's kind of like a story that has a lot to do with how Jupiter is collaborating with Venus, the goddess of love and beauty and, and luck and Mercury messages from the house of larger social alliances and networks, friends in high places with gifts and favors to offer you, blessings from your um, social networks, your real time and virtual. Um, even a last minute money blessing, like a payout or a stipend or a grant or some kind of good money blessing, but from the career zone, a great perk or gain or something coming your way, like a, what do you call it? End of year bonus or something from your career that really makes you smile, especially, okay. Um, you'll be aware of this if it's coming at you, perhaps in the first two weeks of November, closer to the middle of the month. Okay, that's about that. I hope I covered enough for you. I'm Aquarius rising, me, you, and um, we are experiencing so much turbulence <laughs> as Saturn has been squaring Uranus since last year and into this year, Saturn going through the house of us, the Lord of our chart, the Lord of our sky, the most important planet to all Aquarius risings, and Uranus, the modern ruler of our sign, 
squaring from Taurus. So we've been like discombobulated, the nomad transit, where are we supposed to live? How are we going to live? Who are we living with? Where are we living? I just got brood- uprooted from where I was living because my landlord lady friend I needed the place. So she came back and it was the one bedroom. So I had to move again. And I, I saw it coming actually, because I knew my sky. That's what I love about astrology. Um, so we're going through a lot, guys. We're really, it's really hitting us hard that, you know, energy of this transformation and change because of Saturn's continual square to Uranus. <clears throat> and it's been intense. And Uranus has been in our fourth house, the, the moving, changing homes transit since 2018. It was in there for the first, you know, I don't know, May through to October. And then he got back full time uh, in December, 2020. And then we've been going through it like, no, sorry. And then Uranus got back in there in 2019 and hasn't left. Okay. So moving forward, I was background context for the fact that Jupiter is blessing our money house. This is the earnings and possessions house. This is our, our salary, our wages, the way we bring prosperity, voice, vocation, and calling into our life. And Jupiter expands that. Yay. And so let's go back in time. This was happening in 2010. That was a very prosperous year for me. And then we're looking again. He's doing the same expansion job, inflation job. He started May 13th to July 28th, 2021. I taught my first ever divine timing class. I had like 60 students enroll. I made a lot of money for me. It was the first time I had a big, big cohort of people I was teaching and I was like, oh, cash flushed. It was exciting. Like the class wasn't that expensive, but there were enough people. I think I made $12,000 by teaching that class. And it was the first time I've ever taught a class where I made that much money. So this stuff does work. Okay. And then in December 28th to May the 10th, of last year, 28th, December and May 10th of this year, it happened again, Jupiter was whizzing through the second house for all of us Aquarius rising, especially sun and moon. Secondarily, I taught my first ever sky reader class at 44, 45 students. Again, a huge flush of money came at me because of that class. So it's pretty predictable stuff, right? And, um, and money is beyond money, right? You're, 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 you're looking at your values. What do you value? I love to teach. I love to teach wisdom and knowledge, tools and techniques. What is your true voice? Your calling, your vocation. Jupiter's trying to bless that and open up that. I mean, people born with Jupiter in the second house often earn their money by leading or teaching. These are Jupiter words, right? Um, I went to see a psychic years ago. I walked in there and she said, you're a teacher, 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 teacher. At the time I was a reporter. I didn't know what she meant, but she was right. I do like to teach and I am good at teaching. I think anyway, sort of, because I'm, I'm airy. Sometimes I'm impatient with people, but I'm, I try my best. And, um, So now October 28th to December 20th, Jupiter's back in our earnings house and our money and our voice, our calling, our vocation, what we possess. Now, Jupiter can dispossess us because he, you know, like you say, it's time to let go of the blessed endings, let go of that car you don't need, let go of that sofa that doesn't fit your life anymore. It's too big or it doesn't, it's not comfy. But he also expands our possessions. So income, incoming expansion of new possessions and lovely new possessions, I bet. Uh, Neptune is here. Watch out for a little overly inflated hope and optimism around the money story. Um, that will clear, though, as November 23rd, Jupiter goes direct till December 20th, the last hurrah, last salvo in a financially abundant energy field for a lot of us. And, you know, it could even be as he goes direct on November 23rd to December 20th, that you're not actually getting the money coming, pouring in there. Cause often Jupiter seeds things like he throws a bunch of fish into the minnows, into the waters of Pisces, and they're going to bear some uh, fishing fruit later. Right. And you're going to be able to get a, ca- a big catch, a big net. So for me, for example, when I think about me as an example, cause I can use me, I am an Aquarius rising. I will probably be promoting my divine timing masterclass, November 23rd to December 20th, which would probably start. I was going to start in January, I'm going to move it to February because I might want to go to Mexico in January. But bottom line, I'll be in the promotional time, building up the promotion, sending out the emails, sharing with you guys on my YouTube. I love that class. It's not for beginner astrologers. It's for intermediate level. I'm going to teach you some amazing tools. And there's a wait list for my Divine Timing Masterclass. Check the description box below. But I'm hoping I get a good cohort of students in that class because I'm going to teach you some little known timing tools and techniques using ancient and bizarre ancient astrology stuff, not just your transits. Anyway. All right. Anything else? Mm, Because Jupiter is in a trine to Pluto in the 12th house, payment processors, stripe and payment processors like that can be the 12th house, allowing you to generate revenue from foreign shores. It's third from the 10th, if you want to know why. It's like the you traveling salesman, spice trade energy. Foreign lands and foreign shores is the 12th. Jupiter in the second could be that you have the finances available to take a journey to a foreign land or a foreign shore. 
and anything you need to do to eliminate finally any addictive patterns by things you stick in your mouth. Jupiter can help you here with Pluto. Get rid of those things for good. Now, also Aquarius, you have the energy of a stellium in your 10th house. This is good for your reputation and your career, despite the eclipses here, leaking some energy away. This is me taking time away from so many one-on-one clients and doing more teaching and less actual seeing of clients because I've seen thousands of clients in the last four years, thousands. And the pace was lovely for really learning my craft, but it, it, I can't keep the pace. So now I'm booked out five weeks in advance. Some of that's just demand, but some of it's that I've, I've, I've released my spots and I only work four days a week right now. Okay. So with one-on-one clients and at that only more than no more than two a day. Um, but you'll see in that 10th house, this kind of sun, mercury, um, Venus and the South Node stellium, because this is where the eclipses are happening, like November 8th, you know, pile up. And it's going to be that Jupiter energy as things come to the end of the month, right? As, you know, not the end of the month, the end of the, uh, let's say the 8th of the month of November through to the 14th. There's this kind of sweet spot around reputation and career, even with those eclipses, where you have a lot of financial flow from the career and reputation house toward your possessions and earnings house. And you could get a bit of a fame vibe. Venus is a diva up there, a bit of a celebration, a bit of a promotion or a raise or some love from a, a female authority figure or something like that in a work career space. All right. All right. I hope that was useful. And last but not ever least, the double bodied fish, you Pisces mutable people, it's really happening in the house of you. So I save the best for last. So, you know, Jupiter through the first house can make you pregnant. Jupiter through the first house can make you ch more chubby. Jupiter th through the first house can make you more hopeful, optimistic, deeply rooted in spiritual faith and hope and optimism, abundance and growth, intuition, compassion, creativity, and spirituality, magic and mysticism are all coming into inflation in the house of the natural mystic poet of the Zodiac, the Pisces people. Now, Jupiter entered into your Pisces first house, May 13th to July 28th, 2021. And you may have got some up levels there. You gotten pregnant, gotten put some weight on, had some luck, expanded your hope, faith and optimism, you know, a feel good, feel good for you being more powerful, leaderful, and successful and lucky. But then he, he left and then he came back December 28th of, of 21 to May 10th of 22. And now this is game on. You race through your first house and all of you, Pisces, no matter what degree your rising sign was or your sun or moon, we're getting blessed by Jupiter. So blessed health outcomes, um, solutions for health problems, um, gaining some weight, getting pregnant, all that kind of thing. And being lucky, being magnanimous, being leaderful being generous and people perceiving you as such, right? It was, it's a really good time if you need to take a leadership role when Jupiter moves through the first house or a teacher role as well, or guide or guru role for other people. Uh, my sister is a Pisces rising and back in May, I think to July 28th of 21, she was uh, really rocking her um, business, Raven's Eye Oracle, uh, where she is and still is doing um, tarot readings for people and being a guide or a guru for others. Now, October 28th to December 20th, it goes forward again. And it goes into this part of your chart again. It goes forward from direct re retrograde to direct motion on the 23rd. If you have a late degree Pisces, like I'm going to say 20, I'm going to say for you guys, 20 to 29 degrees, because this is a, such an important transit, 20 to 29 degrees, you're really feeling the luck, saturation, the goodness, the faith, the magnanimous Jupiter vibe. He could definitely clear up any foggy health problems here, like because Neptune can bring amorphous, diffuse challenges to your health or your mental health. And Jupiter is trying to find you the, the exit strategy for those challenges. And um, he's got a sextile to Pluto in your 11th, meaning that you're eldest sibling could really be of great help to you the eldest sibling in the family of origin or power is powering up for you from allies who are friends in your social groups online or otherwise or networks of social belonging and you could get some great gains financially out of this pluto placement with jupiter in the house of you as well financially even maybe some windfalls maybe an elder sibling will help you financially as well um, eldest sibling and your 10th house 
oh, your, your ninth house is where that Scorpio stellium will be in place kind of October 28th to around the 13th of November. Cause you want, we want that sun Mercury Venus combo, all like sort of loving you up in the ninth house. And, uh, this is really about foreign lands and travel and visas. And um, I'm not kidding. It definitely could be a sibling comes to visit you anytime or plans a trip to visit you between November, October 28th and December 20th. But if you want to go off and gallivant to a country that's not the one you're living in or that you were born in, that's really good for you. Or to educate yourself in a very important spiritual path, something you need to learn, a dharmic path, a course or educational path that really serves you. I mean, there's opportunities to find or begin or enroll in that thing called that you know, opportunities. A course in legal affairs are going to have some blessings as well. October 28th, th mid, early to mid November, where outcomes are in your favor. And certainly with the Venus Kazemi on the 22nd, 23rd and the eighth house, there's definitely some inheritance money that you or your partner business or marriage are coming into and maybe some of this court agreements has to do with the states and trusts and settling things or getting the ducks in a row around that um ultimately the ninth house is your deepest faith in what life is about and jupiter is about faith and religion and wisdom and knowledge so you're up leveling in the first two weeks of november big time in terms of a deeper groundedness in what it is you think life is about what are your 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 spiritual slogans like mine and mine is in a gabby gabby um what's it bernstein the universe is a friendly place or i always say something good is always trying to happen um, these are things that i say to myself because i actually believe them so your beliefs are the ninth house so jupiter can deepen and up level your beliefs and with a scorpio ninth house you guys don't believe any old shit you know you're not about to like drink the kool-aid norm necessarily you're looking for like deep occult mystery beliefs to be useful to you you want to go under the surface to the hidden realms to dive deeper into the way the world works. This is like Neo in the Matrix placement. You're not going to like just believe things. You know, if Morpheus tells you that something is different than you think it is, and if you take the pill, the red pill or the blue pill, things are going to like change dramatically about how you think <clears throat> the world works or God works or the universe works or something like that. You'll do it. So there's this kind of up level there and your belief structures. All right. Father, father figures, <clears throat> ninth house could be playing a role in your life the first two weeks of November, basically, as well. It's quite positive. Um, anything else? I think I'm done. I think I'm done. All right. I mean, lastly, I mean, a lot of Pisces are moving your home. You've got like a long journey, October, August 30th to, oh, my way, like the third week. No, the seventh, yeah, the third week of March, you got Mars in your fourth house. You're buying, selling, renovating, moving, changing cutting, sawing your home. And if you're not doing that, you're fighting with someone who lives with you. So try not to do that. Okay. I hope that was useful, Pisces. Thank you very much for listening. Don't forget my like button is down there. If you hit it, you get to be like making me successful. <laughs> and um, check out my draw. If you get this video before October 31st, Halloween draw, get on in for my witchy live, you know, giveaway of 10 prizes. I'll probably knowing me give like 20 away. I love giving things away and it'll be a lot of fun to draw live in a hat for free readings, free courses, half price courses, half price readings. I'm going to mix it all up. So yeah, so that to get into that, subscribe to my channel, tell me you subscribed in the comments and, or sign up for my newsletter, second ballot. And I'll see that you've signed up <clears throat> cosmic moonshine. <clears throat> all the details are in the description box, about how to do all of those things. Okay, guys, I really appreciate you hanging in there. It's getting dark here in, I am in Vancouver, Canada, and I'm trying not to be hot. So I'm wearing a summer top and I'm all over the place here. I'm kind of like, <laughs> I don't know what you, I have to say, but I can't figure out. Oh yeah. It's a mirror image screen. There we go. This is like my little cotton tea that I'm sleeping. And this is my fit, Marin Altman, one of my favorite young astrologers. So we talked showing her fit, but what this really is, it's called me trying not to be too hot in a very well heated house in Northern Ontario that belongs to my sister healing with Nancy Lynn.com. And you caught some of my words about her. She is magical and, you know, honestly creates some miracle healings for people. All right. Uh, it is uh, at a distance. It is 5.09. I'm done. October 21st. My Patreon community gets this first. And if you've always wanted to get 
ad free content ahead of time, uh, you know, where you get it three, sometimes two, three, four, five, six a week ahead, depending on how fast I'm on my production schedule. Um, you might want to join for five bucks a month, my Patreon community. Why not? I mean, it's so cheap. That's the minimum you need to pay to get everything in advance and not have to navigate these darn YouTube ads. The YouTube ads do help me. They help my channel grow, but they, I mean, they help me financially spend the time to make these videos for you guys. But you know, you don't get rich on YouTube ads uh, at the level of subscribers and followers I have yet. <laughs> All right. Thanks guys. Appreciate you. Ciao, ciao.